My name is Alex Ruthman, and I'm an associate professor of music education and music technology here at NYU Steinhardt. <laughs> Uh, it all started for me back in my undergraduate days at the University of Michigan as a performing arts technology major. Uh, there I was involved with blending coursework in French horn performance and interactive art, engineering, and performing arts technology. And one of the cool classes that we were involved with was the Digital Music Ensemble. And in that course, we had the opportunity to work uh, in developing our own technologies for performing and creating. Uh, in particular, we worked with a sensor interface that was designed by one of the visual art professors at the University of Michigan, Michael Rodemer. Uh, and I helped write the MAX and MSP externals for communicating with it. And we started using that to interface the physical world to making music. So it, it really, for me, started very uh, just having the opportunity to experiment uh, with making music, with designing technologies uh, in my undergrad. And then from there, uh, I interned a couple summers at a small company on the south shore of the St. Lawrence Seaway in uh, about an hour east of Quebec in Canada. Uh, it was a small company called Innovations FM7, and they were designing a series of MIDI controllers for the elementary music classroom. Uh, they built a MIDI wind recorder and a MIDI xylophone and a whole collaborative performance system uh, aimed at young kids in primary school collaborating, improvising, performing together all under headphones. And this was back at the end of the 1990s, early 2000s. And it was there um, as the technology consultant that I really started to understand that a lot of the technologies that are designed for music teaching and learning uh, at the professional level aren't well matched to young kids. And so at that point I realized that I needed to get additional schooling in music education and training and I then went on and pursued a master's degree and a doctorate and did middle school general music teaching uh, and through that experience learned a lot more about how kids learn, what engages kids and that feeds into my development today. Part of being on the music education faculty here is I get to work in training the next generation of teachers. But one of the unique things here at NYU is that uh, not all of our music education majors uh, will find employment in the public schools. We really uh, view music education here as very broad. And the, what, the phrase that I like to look at is, you know, anywhere there's, a, there's music is an opportunity for an educator to work. So, in essence, anyone who's designing technology uh, is also an educator in, in many ways based on the decisions they make and the design around their technology, be it a piece of hardware or a piece of software for music making. To me, music technology has an integral part in uh, many music classrooms. Those classrooms that are uh, in schools, those classrooms that are at home, the classrooms that are on the internet through YouTube and things like that. For me, uh, technology uh, d provides a wonderful opportunity for broadening access to learning, for uh, making it easier for students and, and musicians to be expressive, uh, and also as a creative medium for um, sharing our music with other people. Uh, as such, uh, the design of technology is an important issue. Uh, and now that we're starting to see more technologies designed for kids and for adults and novices, uh, it's important to learn how they learn and how everyone is engaged with music in order to better design technology for them. My approach to research in music education and music technology is to take a design-based research approach where we bring together the audiences that we're designing for in the process of researching and developing technologies. For me, an audience could be a fan at a music festival, it could be a student in a class, it could be uh, an older adult learning an instrument for the first time. But the key thing is, is that we involve them in the actual process from the very beginning to the very end of the research. We aren't just designing research and designing technologies in, a, in an ivory tower at the university or in the lab at the corporation uh, and then developing it and then marketing it to our future users. We're actually involving uh, future users in the development process from the beginning. So in this process, we invite uh, students in to imagine different possibilities around music and around technology and around learning and put them together with that audience in researching uh, an iterative design process that starts with an idea where we'll 
prototype something, we'll start to play with it, we'll get feedback, we'll test it out in the field, we'll bring it back, we'll revise it, we'll go through that process many, many times, further refining the technology and further refining the experiences around the technology so that they're most effective for that particular audience. The community of researchers with whom I work involved undergraduate students, master students, doctoral students, as well as practicing teachers in the area and industry partners. Uh, we work collaboratively together uh, in designing the next generation of technologies for music making, learning, and engagement. I particularly like to involve undergraduates in uh, the research as assistants in designing new things and working with us in working with real teachers and it ends up having a mutual benefit in many different ways. I have undergraduate music technology and music education students working together with in-service practicing teachers. So it's a wonderful opportunity for the uh, undergraduates with which I work to work directly with practicing teachers. The practicing teachers get to share their pedagogical knowledge about how to teach and how kids learn and engage with music with the undergraduate students who are studying to become teachers. And the in-service in practicing teachers get to learn uh, a little bit about music technology and content and STEM and music making from our undergraduate students who are actively involved in learning in their own coursework. The research that I'm working on right now, because we take a design-based research approach, is applicable to students and teachers right now. Uh, it's not something where we have to wait years and years for the fruits of the research to be apparent. Because we actually involve our end users in the design of the technologies and because we're working primarily with free or open source or low-cost hardware and software, the innovations that we find and we develop through our research, uh, we post on our blogs and we share immediately with the teachers we're working and then they share it with their friends and uh, everything that we develop can be uh, easily put into classroom use tomorrow. To me, music research is exciting because it's an opportunity to create something new that n doesn't exist before. It's an opportunity to work with people in solving their real problems and their challenges, things that come up in the classroom around music teaching and learning for me. Uh, to me, music research is important because it helps us advance our understanding of what already exists and develop new solutions uh, to solve real world problems. Bring in the bass. Turn them off, bring in the drum set.